What's going on, Digital Pigs? I'm going to change it up this week, do some fantasy football theme shows, and I think fantasy football has been excellent for the NFL. I think it's taken your average fan and made them a lot more aware of players outside their market of superstar players that might not be on the best teams and it's taking games that people might normally not watch your one o'clock your four o'clock your late night games and all of a sudden made them almost must see tv because now all of a sudden your quarterback your wide receiver the person you're playing against defense is on those games and all of a sudden it's must see tv for you where you're kind of on the edge of your seat so i think that's why you've seen a popularity increase not just in the nfl but a fantasy football. Now, of course, if you played the last few years, you know consistently your first players taken and generally your most productive players are going to be your running backs. So I think it's only fair that I start the series out talking about the running backs. And to be a little bit different, I'm going to go through the top eight in each position. So my number one running back this year is going to be Ray Rice. Ray Rice has proven that he can be a productive every down back for the Ravens. He just got a big contract that he's been looking for. But I think a key part a lot of people aren't looking into is the fact that Joe Flacco might be a little bit gun shy this year. I know he's got all the weapons, but what he doesn't have is the big contract. And the game tape he puts down this season is going to be what other teams look at and even the Ravens look at when they determine is this a guy that we can bring in to be our franchise long-term answer at quarterback. And I think Joe Flacco understands that and might be just a little bit gun shy when it comes down to putting a ball in a, in a place where it shouldn't go or it could almost be picked off. I also don't know if Joe Flacco's really recovered from that ball not being caught in the championship game, so I think he's going to be a little bit hesitant from that as well. Second, and a lot of people have him as number one, is going to be Arian Foster. But I think Arian Foster, a majority of his productivity came from when he had to be the backbone of the Texans, when Matt Schaub went down in Week 10 and Andre Johnson got nicked up. I think with both of those players coming back, both of those players being healthy, I don't think we're going to see the same dependability and reliability of Arian Foster getting the ball as much as he was last year. So that's the only reason I'm kind of putting him down a notch. Third, I've got LaShawn McCoy. Him and Mike Vick are, without a doubt, hands down, the most dynamic players on the same team starting that we have in the NFL. They have big playability at any point, and LaShawn McCoy is really a touchdown threat every time he touches the ball, and it's not something we've seen in a long time, except for my number four back, which is going to be Chris Johnson. Now, I think Chris Johnson is going to have a bounce back this season. I think that the, the system in Tennessee has stabilized. However, the one concern I have is Kenny Britt and his health and whether he's going to be able to come in and be that deep threat that lets Chris Johnson get to the second level and man up on a safety and man up on a corner. I think a lot of Kenny Britt being healthy is going to determine how many big runs, 20, 30-yard gains we see out of Chris Johnson. Moving on, number five is going to be Matt Forte. To me, Matt Forte is the best all-around back in the league, hands down, no doubt about it. And I think the best thing that has happened to him is kind of what we talked about with Chris Johnson. He's now got a reunite of Jay Cutler and Brandon Marshall. And I think Brandon Marshall is going to stretch the field. He's bounced around from team to team, and he's shown that he can be productive on all of them. But I think he's going to see his best season as a bear. Now, when you look at number six, I'm going to put in Adrian Peterson. All the tools are there for him to be great. The question now is going to be the reliability. How well is he rehabbed? Those are going to be questions that have to be answered. I mean, those are questions that will probably define the end of his career, as sad as that seems, based on the greatness we've seen out of Adrian Peterson the past few years. Wrap this up with uh, Jamal Charles. I think Jamal Charles is kind of a throwback running back. You know, he's a guy that will come in and just hammer you. And I think that's really underrated when it comes to the NFL. I think Jamal Charles is kind of an underappreciated running back because he's not on the best team in the league. And certainly most of the flash from Kansas City comes from players like Tom Bahali and Dwayne Bowe. When I look at the last player on my list, it's Maurice Jones-Drew. I wonder if we're not going to have situations like we've seen repeated time and time and time again. Maurice Jones-Drew's problem is he's going to hold out. He might be under-conditioned, especially for a smaller player, 
and his quarterback situation in Jacksonville is very tough. So I think those things are going to hold him back, but he's still a very, very good runner, and he still has every opportunity and every tool needed physically to be one of the best backs in the league. Now, in closing, some of the guys I'm not sold on. I'm not sold on Marshawn Lynch. A lot of, lot of stress on Marshawn Lynch to be a franchise running back, and I really don't think that he's done it. He didn't do it in Buffalo. He got shipped out to Seattle, and I know he wants to do it, but I just don't know if he's got enough gas in the tank. I don't know that the Bills would let go of, and I don't know if any team would let go of a franchise running back if they had, if they knew for sure that they had one. Demarco Murray, I'm not sold on. I think he might be a flash in the pan, and I'm not sold on Ryan Matthews, quite frankly, either. Something I think that is going to be big this year is kind of the old faithful running backs. I like maybe getting Steven Jackson and Michael Turner late, both obviously very dependable backs, both playing a dome, both get the ball a lot. If it came down to me maybe drafting early and having to take, you know, Arian Foster and then a lesser known running back like a Donald Brown or a Ben Jarvis Green Ellis, I would much rather use my first round pick to get another elite player and maybe a quarterback or a wide receiver and then try to go that route with Steven Jackson, Michael Turner. I think we're also going to have that with uh, Frank Gore. I don't think Brandon Jacobs is going to be able to come in and make the impact that they expect him to. So I think Frank Gore is going to be another player you can maybe pick up a little bit later that's going to be just as productive as some of the guys in front of him. As far as breakout years, there's two players that I really look at to have bounce back years. The first is C.J. Spiller. I think Fred Davis has kind of worn himself down in Buffalo, and I think C.J. is finally primed to have that big breakout year where we really see the talent personified that we've seen in just little flashes here and there. So I think C.J. Spiller might be a guy. I don't want to say he's certainly not a sleeper because he's a very well-known name, but I think you might see a lot of him this season. And then secondly, I've got Darren McFadden, and I know he's had durability issues. I know he's had health concerns, but if he can stay healthy, I really think he can bring a lot to that offense. And if Carson Palmer can get settled down, he certainly has some very good weapons at wide receiver. I think we can see a lot of big plays out of Darren McFadden. And again, a guy that might not go second, maybe third round in a lot of leagues. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I know football and fantasy football very opinionated. Love to read your guys' comments. And I will definitely have more videos out this week.